description. All right, we are on to assignment four. This is another quick turnover assignment because it's using skills we've used before, but in a different way. And we don't have to collect lots and lots of new hard to find reference. We just have to find a lot of cloud material, right? At large enough resolution. And the goal is to create our own custom cloud that suggests our fantasy creature. We're also gonna paint our own sky behind it. So for the first time, we're, we're making our own pixels as part of our art. That's what the gradient's for. Um, and I like to put a little, you know, mini PNG of the creature in the corner, because that makes, makes it so the portfolio shows what you're inspired by, right? So there's lots of different ways to do this. There's lots of different types of clouds and textures to work with. It's gonna make you start paying attention to how cl clouds are lit. And the reason we use clouds is because their edges are so important. So we're really focusing on the hardness and softness of edges, which is really what tells a, uh, an amateur compositing artist from a professional compositing artist, how well they can control the edges. And your cloud, like in this instance, might be really pretty abstracted, you know, pretty hard to tell what it is, but it is going to be inspired by your creature. And even the lighting of it is going to be inspired by your creature. So it also kind of shows whether your creature silhouette shape is suggestive as it should be for good creature design. Whereas this one, this is a cool creature, I like it, but its overall silhouette isn't all that suggestive, right? And the cloud kind of shows that. And then this one, there's some, certain things that clouds don't do well. They don't make vertical columns. That doesn't look very believable. So if you have a four-legged creature like this with lots of vertical columns, realize that clouds are always being pushed by the wind and that through gestalt theory, the idea that we connect with our minds like dotted lines and make them into one thing, you can layer up lots of little clouds that are being pushed and that will suggest to us that verticality. So it's kind of a conceptual challenge here to figure out how do you make that cloud a believable cloud first and then also suggestive of your creature without making it look really cheesy. Some of you are gonna really like this project. You're gonna enjoy the limitation of only using cloud material. We're gonna be dodging it, burning it, smudging it, you know, pushing it back and forth, doing a lot of clone stamping. It will give us a lot of practice at these things we've only hinted at before. But some of you are really gonna dislike this project <laughs> because it's hard to get it to all look like one cloud. And even though we think of clouds as being white, clouds are not white right? They're pinkish, they're yellowish, they're bluish. So it also gives us a lot of fine control of color balance and getting the temperature right. Yes? Does it have to be like a realistic setting? Like does the, for example, sky have to be blue when we have clouds? It needs to feel like a believable cloud, but it can be in any kind of sky setting you like. So it can be at sunset, it can be during a storm. In some ways that increases the difficulty, right? Because it makes it harder to find reference. This is another one with a silhouette, not so suggestive, right? That's why having this is helpful, but it will still show the same skills. Okay, so let's look at some of the past student examples and some students, hopefully I've kept those examples. I've had to prune them down quite a bit, but some students have used more uh, atypical sky, you know, than just the bright blue. So you can play with that. And you can also play with, like this student did, um, adding other kind of background clouds, right? So it doesn't need to be like one cloud in the sky, though clearly this is the one suggested by their creature. And so this can be done well. <laughs> it takes a lot of digital art skill to do it well. And I love this one, because remember clouds come in all forms, right? So these are like really close to the, the ground, really wispy, almost contrail clouds, which work with that character. And this student, I keep this one in because they actually took their own photos of clouds and they actually um, like just paid attention and tried to find clouds that kind of suggested parts of their creature. And you're welcome to do that. Anything you take with, with a modern digital camera is gonna be high enough resolution to use as reference. All right, so we're gonna get started. These are cool, they're fun to look at. All right, so 
what we're going to do, ooh, I have a glitch effect there, is we're going to start with a PNG. And so I made this new PNG. This is different than my assignment two one. Oh, wait, no, that's my assignment two one. <laughs> so I have two PNGs to choose from. That's the one I turned in for assignment two, but then I created a new one based on how I used it in assignment three, right? Because I changed its position. I used puppet warp a little bit. I used a little bit of lighting. And what's funny is I didn't notice it when I was using puppet warp and it doesn't really show in my creature scape, but it did this to the feather. So little things can happen with puppet warp sometimes. And of course, before we print it, we want to be really detail oriented. But I can choose now, well, which one do I want to use as the basis for my cloud? And I think I'm going to use this one. I like kind of the dodging and burning on it a little bit more. Yeah, I'm going to use that one. Okay, so I'm going to create an assignment four. And then I'm going to move this new PNG element to it. Right. And now I am going to open up that PNG with Photoshop. So you can do this with your assignment two PNG, or you can create a new PNG from assignment three, right? But notice it's pretty closely cropped to it already. The first thing I wanna do, and this is always the first thing on the assignment sheets, is to, to make sure I met, meet at least the minimum resolution. So I'm gonna go up to image size, and I want it to be at least eight by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. And mine is that, it's, it's already you know, 8.6 by 10 inches by 350. But if I needed to, I could actually just go to canvas size and increase it. So I might make mine actually uh, nine by 12. And I just increase the space around it. Then immediately what I'm going to do is make a duplicate of that PNG Actually, immediately what I'm going to do is fix that little feather thing that got distorted and just delete it. Okay, but now what I'm going to do is duplicate the PNG. So by duplicating it, I now have a second copy. I'm going to hit Command T. I'm going to hold down Shift so I can shrink it without distorting it. And I'm going to set it in the corner. So I have a little mini me. And even that mini me at full resolution looks really crisp, right? Because we're working at 350 pixels per inch at at least eight by 10 inches. Okay, now I need to make this into a cloud. <laughs> so how do I do that? Well, let's think of our creature. We spent a lot of loving time cutting this creature out, right? Cleaning it up. Um, think of it as a cookie cutter we have carefully made this cookie cutter shape. So really all I want this creature for is for its shape. And what we're going to do is select the empty space around that creature by unchecking contiguous and clicking around it. And then I'm gonna actually turn that layer off. And you can see with the little buzzing lines that it gives me that cookie cutter shape. The problem is I don't have any dough yet for this cookie cutter. So I need to go find some cloud dough for this cookie cutter, and then I'll be able to cut it out. So right now I'm going to save this as, before I go find my cloud reference, assignment four, and we call this our cloud creature. And like a good student, I will save it to the desktop. And now I want to find clouds. So I'm going to move that cloud creature once it's saved from the desktop into my assignment four folder. And now I want cloud reference. Now the first cloud reference we want, and we're going to want to seam together at least five different clouds, but I want one big fluffy one. That's like the base dough. Because if you think of like sugar cookies, you need just one big roll of plain dough to cut the shape out of. And then you can decorate it with lots of other elements on top. So I'm going to go to Google. 
Um, yeah, I think I'll go right to Pixabay by 10. At 350, we don't quite need 3,000 pixels. And because clouds are soft anyway. But if I do Pixabay, just maybe save some time. And I just search for cloud. Right. Now let's see how many Pixabay has. It has 853 pages of cloud. Right. And the only problem with Pixabay is it's going to sort them by whatever was most recently uploaded and tagged. So I can say I only want photos, but I can also say I only want kind of white as the color. That might help. If I choose a different color like pink, I'll get a lot more sunset ones, but there's only one page of those. Oh, well, that's with white with pink. So you can try the different settings. I don't know that I can change it. Well, we can go for size. And here, I can actually say 3,000, larger than 3,000 by 3,000. This is what Google Images used to allow you to do and no longer does. Why? Right. It's frustrating. So I scroll through, and I want to find just that big, doughy, you know, fluffy cloud. So this is a good one. Go to the next page. And here's a little shortcut. If I don't want to just go page one, page two, since all of you are looking for clouds this way too, I might go right into the search bar and type in like a page number, like 666. No, that didn't work. <laughs> oh, because this isn't, because I already limited it. This, this isn't the one with 800 something. So let's see. This only has five pages. So I could go to, yeah, the next page. But you can skip to, you know, a later page. Like I can do page four. Should work. Yeah. And so if you're going through hundreds of results, you can skip to like start on page 500. This looks like a nice reference to use. Oh, this one's beautiful. Now the thing about the cloud reference is you also want a similar direction of light for your clouds. And don't worry about the sky. We're gonna create our own sky. So this is also gonna give us a lot of practice cutting out clouds, just like we did a lot with our texture fills. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different references. I have to download them all. In Pixabay, you have to have an account, right? But it's free. And then you just want the largest size possible. Click on download. Because it's Creative Commons open, the Pixabay license that, that users agree to before submitting, it's like being public domain. It's, you don't have to attribute them. You can change it any way you want. You can use it for commercial use even. So it, it's a really good resource. It keeps, keeps you from having to pay a lot for stock images of clouds, right? Just to build with. Of course, we also want to transform and make our cloud totally original where no one would recognize that their cloud photo was used. And we can always take our own cloud photos as well. Okay, last one. And then we'll have the reference we need to, to cut out our creature as a cookie cutter. Okay, so now I can close that. I can go to my downloads folder. I can see all those clouds and move them into my cloud reference folder within assignment four. So I've got six. Now I want to see, okay, which one is the big fluffiest one that I can cut my creature out of? And it looks like this one's pretty good. I'm going to drag and drop that one on top. And then I'm going to stretch it just like rolling dough to make sure it covers my creature. 